Ah, uh, okay. Hello, everyone. All right, to begin. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit nasally. You know, that's why I put it on mute sometimes. Okay. Is there anybody even here? Okay, let's begin. So I thought of speaking about this idea, which, um, you know, it was honestly this sentence that I've heard many times in my life, but I'd never paid attention to. And so what it is, is pretty much, you know, some, there's some moments in life, you know, when something happens, you know, and a person comes up to you and says, you know, you know, make of the moment what you will, or, you know, make something out of the moment, or what you make of the moment suggests who you are in all this. Pretty much this phrase, what do you you know, what you make of the moment. And then something happened. The moment I was thinking about this phrase, at the same time, my mind took this poetic angle. And I thought about every human being that has walked this earth or that will walk this earth. It's as if every, every moment of consciousness is making something of the moment, you know, making something of the self. You see, this is the poetry of life. We cannot go through an experience without having either something about the world change or something about the self change. The moment any one of those changes, you know, it's like reality is different. So this idea of what you make of the moment and this idea that you know let's say countless human beings have just you know been born made something of the moment and in some sense gone you know i think i don't know who it was i don't know if this was marcus aurelius or alexander the great but it was like this quote that was like i came and i conquered right something in these lines right and so we have come here to in some sense, as Lao Tzu says, conquering others is strength, but conquering yourself is true power. For example, when you look at somebody like Hitler, you know, that person was not wise at all, right? Because rather than conquering himself, he decided to conquer the world, you see, to conquer others. So what you make of the moment is how your attention transforms something of an objective form 
an objective shape into something of subjective meaning. You know, there was a time where for me, I was like, what are thoughts? You know, I mean, I never, I've never like, actually, it, it, you know, thought is something that is like, as a child, like I accepted so easily, you know, never realizing what sort of classification system am I imposing on my mind, right, to, to even conceive, like, the philosophy of the idea of a thought. It's like, it's like ascribing a subject to a subject, you know? Anyways. So for me, you know, there was a sort of collective glimpse and it fascinated me that so many human beings, so many different types of creatures and consciousness, and we don't have to even limit it to our planet. Like not just how many creatures have been, you know, come and gone, how many types of consciousness has come and gone on this rock, this 4.5 billion year old rock. But think about how many types of intelligence in this world are trying to make sense of what they are and where they are. I honestly feel it's like a level, right? Right now we are creatures which we are in the level of the game of the world where it's like semi-known, semi-unknown. Really human beings, let me tell you what's happening. <clears throat> we are in the dimension of mind. That means poetically, we are, like imagine there is, this might be one of the most bizarre things I, I'm going to say, but. Think of hell being like the body of God. Think of earth being the mind of God. And think of like heaven being the soul of God. This is a very abstract, bizarre statement I'm saying. But I'm just saying for the structure of the thought. You see, some, something that was a very big realization for me is that this life is not just, you know, a character in a video game that just completes the video game, you know, but rather it is a process that's happening. And the cool thing about our free will is that it is choosing to separate itself. When you look at young children, you know, this was a theory I had. And then I, I realized I have a memory of like, like I have a memory before I learned language and I even knew what my name was. I was just like a kid in a room, just like looking at this like corner of the ceiling. Anyways, what do you make of the moment? You know, they say that, um, you know, knowledge is like you think you know everything. And wisdom is re you realize the more you know, the less you actually know about everything. Why? Because the bigger the world becomes, the bigger the mystery becomes. So ironically, even though we're, we're, we're like seeking knowledge in an unknown world, it's unknown beyond reason. You know, I always thought about it. I thought about what if there's moments in life where there is no reason, you know? Because really what philosophy is, is trying to comprehend why meaning is here at all you know philosophers are like you know people who they look at the concept of meaning like something having meaning and that concept of meaning the idea of meaning is like an alien you know i think that's really you know how you become a philosopher And people don't realize we are like a system. Let me say it this way. You know, I, here, I pondered like how important 
is my existence in the past in contrast to my experience of the future. You know? Sometimes I think about it like a, you could say this is like let's, we can create a concept out of this. Call it Mr. Within's time traveler's dilemma. <clears throat> and so it's this idea that if your future self came back from the future to the present and told you that it could take you away from this present into the, like the future but you could to any timeline but you could never come back like would the person sacrifice the comfort of what they know for the finding of something new and not know right so the idea is like you see our sense of self changes but contextually we keep the world static right so we have this notion that like the planet's just chilling and it's like the creatures on it are getting old and they come and go and whatnot right so we are creatures where our world is either being kept static or moving slower um uh moving changing slower than our individual lives so we can really say that it's not that free will is an illusion there's a mystery behind mysterianism behind the concept of the free will but it's just this idea like how would i say it? i don't know i don't know how to say it <laughs> I just know this, that <clears throat> edu the educational system and all teachers and, you know, educators, you know, they have to be direct and honest or, you know, the students will find out what they're hiding. And let me tell you what ideological systems hide and ideological systems of any kind any kind let me tell you what ideological systems hide ideological systems they hide novelty you see it's like the person's like man you know if somebody asks me in the present who am i it's based on my past <clears throat> you know So really, we are like these creatures that the way we communicate to each other is based on systems of meaning from the past, but we're actually really living for the future, you know? <clears throat> you know, there was, there was a moment in my life, this is kind of like hilarious to say, it's a bit of a tangent, but why not? There came a moment in my life where I like had this sort of, let's say, I don't want to say an existential crisis, but some sort of, you know... Uh, existential haziness okay and for a second I was asking myself like what is attractive about this world if like if I had a choice to stick around in this world if I, if I had a choice to go to another world like what is so attractive about <clears throat> you know life and human existence Pretty much my mind was trying to figure out what reason it has to be here. And you know what happened? I realized there is no reason when the whole thing is changing. Like if the reason is change, like anybody who aligns with change, like you're going to feel happy at the end of life. But you know, if you don't align with change, well, guess what? You know, it's like, you know, the, the tides of time go on. Time is like a marathon runner that never stopped running. You know, I find it fascinating. You know, human beings noticed animate in movement of intelligence. And so their minds had to ascribe something to it, right? And nowadays we are ascribing like the context to the individual 
But back in the day, you know, there was like a spirit to the world. You know, it wasn't the spirituality you see now where people are like, oh my God, you got a third eye too. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but it, but it's like the spirituality they had. This is at least my, my interpretation of it, okay? It wasn't a spirituality where you had to, like, a, like, like ritualism would become a passcode and then the secrets of the world would be unlocked. Let me tell you how this world is designed. This world is designed that if you are not acting in accordance to the resonance of the original earth, you don't get to see it. Okay? <clears throat> so let me tell you something bizarre. If somebody was like Mr. Within, what's the ultimate state of, let's say, individual consciousness in an unknown world? Once there is an acceptance of karma, which is another way of saying, once you realize whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're existing, is karma meaning it has been caused <clears throat> you see anything in life this is why the past is useful because we could understand how the present is here and you know it's various factors sometimes life is like i i separate myself and i'm like yeah you know my name is amin you know i use this online alias mr within i'm just some guy you know living in life right but there's moments where i'm like everything is so interconnected everything so is is so interdependent and interconnected that at some point i'm like who is it like how is my name acting like it owns something that is part of a collective system You know, it's the, it's the poetry of the soul that, you know, without a world, the self has no body. And poetically, it has nobody. You see, what you make of the moment is pretty much how free will can pilot, okay? <clears throat> and I'm someone who, whenever something really upsets me, I've noticed... Like, re like I've just noticed I have this subconscious backup system that, you know, <laughs> that anytime something upsets me, I react to it in an over-exaggerated way and then my own silliness cheer cheers me up, you know? <clears throat> but anyways, what I'm trying to say is what are you making of the moment? And once you have understood this, let's say from a personal level where you're asking like, okay, what am I making of myself? After you've experienced those paradigms, then there will come this view where what would I do for my world? And you know what the ideal position is? The ideal position is this is going to sound incredible. Like if people understand this, I think like <clears throat> you can contribute by just knowing this to the, to the advancement of civilization. The idea is, is that the human being was never just a physical entity and it is actually a multidimensional entity and in order to truly motivate the advancement of a species, which then becomes the advancement of the civilization of that species, we have in some sense an inner journey, an inner task to complete, an inner mission, and we have an outer mission, okay? <clears throat> now, in this life, you know, I, I, was not the, I was not born as like, you know, the, the, the son of a, a, you know, trillionaire, billionaire where I have some resources to in some sense, maybe in the future I'm trying to, like, you know, at some point I decided like, okay, if money is an energy, may, you know, may this energy assist the advanced civilization you know who knows maybe there's maybe there's a spirit to money you know and maybe that spirit knows where everything is going 
and will help the advanced civilization. But what the idea is, what I'm what I'm pretty much trying to say is that my view is that in when everybody internally realizes that advanced civilization is the greatest idea ever discovered, ever realized. And one of the most important chess pieces in this game of history that our species is in. People don't realize, right? Because let me tell you what was happening. Like right now, if, if, if just these Mr. Within talks, I'm telling you, if these Mr. Within talks suddenly are heard, they're intended for the whole species and even the universal sector. But if they're suddenly heard by the species, I think everybody will suddenly just subconsciously consider the value, okay? I don't know how to say it, but um, karma is what you're looking at in this world, right? There's many ways to look at life. There's many dimensions to present it in. There's many modes of living, okay? But what I am saying is like, it's so, to me, it's too coincidental. It's too, too mysterious. Why after 4.5 billion years, right? 4.5 billion years, we have an evolutionary creature that has memory, that has imagination, right? Memory is the ability of the mind to interact with the past. Imagination is the ability of the mind to interact with the present and the future. It's attention, dear viewers, you know, like, you know, human beings, we don't, we're not like Jedis that have a lightsaber, okay, like we could just like take out our lightsaber, somebody's like, hey man, you know, I don't like the color of your tie, and you just like take off your tie, and it's a lightsaber, (laughs) he's like, what was that, (laughs) what did you say, (laughs) No, no, but what I'm, what I'm saying is we don't, we're not, we don't have lightsabers, right? But we have this force that is, it's like sight enter our eyes, enters our eyes, and consciousness as an idea looks out. So what, the force, like we don't, <clears throat> think of it this way, we're not like airbender level where people can like move like, you know, mountains and all of this, right? (laughs) You know, in a world of magic, like, I think people will stop going to the gym. Like, if, if there was, if people had, like, 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 in a world of Jedis, like, they should all be fat properly, you know? (laughs) Bunch of fat Jedis where the force is just moving them, even moving their hand. (laughs) <laughs> Man. Anyways, anyways, where I'm going with all of this is that what are you making of the moment? And what are you making of the moment from a collective context, which is pretty much what are we doing here? Okay. You know, I'm, 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 I, I had, I have this view where I'm like, okay, which one makes sense? For the longest time, we have been this unconscious physical creature. This unconscious physical creature has become conscious that it's a physical creature. So, because it suddenly knows it's a physical creature, it has access to a non-physical state. So when I think about, all right, I'm this creature that has been born on this planet. There's so many different ways to live. And so if I was to fathom, like even though right now I I call this civilization, civilization 1.0, you know, (coughs) it's like, uh, you know, it's the gift from our ancestors. Civilization 1.0 is the gift that our ancestors gave us. Civilization 2.0 would be, you know, (coughs) the gift we give to the future generations.
You know what it is? It's like we've been given intelligence. And what does intelligence do? It measures, it scans the moment. And when it scans the moment, it's like, what do I do with this geometrical three-dimensional perception I'm, like I'm receiving from the moment, right? And so what I've realized, it's kind of like, <clears throat> I don't know how to say it, but like, behind my eyes, every time in this lifetime where I've closed my eyes and I've seen something like in my inner realms I have not been my body and you know what's strange you know how brilliant the geometry of nature is we've been designed <clears throat> to experience life first person point of view that means our eyes are on our face but imagine if life was being experienced from a third person point of view imagine your eyes were above your head right so imagine in the future i've written about this in my sci-fi in the future like phones are going to become these flying spheres and the flying sphere is going to be like a camera and everything and just some advanced flying sphere that's just wherever you are it's just like your ultimate like <clears throat> you know techno like it, it's kind of like your phone's going to become a digital guardian angel in the future okay <laughs> somebody looks at their you know you know old nokia phone it's like you it's like you'd be proud of your you know descendants yeah <laughs> What I'm trying to say is it, it's there's a reason it's first person point of view and it is not a third person point of view because if it was third person point of view we'd have to see our death do you know but because it's first person point of view we are just seeing a part of the moment you see how bizarre nature is And let me tell you what the most dangerous thing in life is. What the most dangerous thing in life is, is ignorance. And what ignorance means is action without observation. And the more the species becomes emotional, it's going to act with, without observation. Because why is observation necessary? Observation is to figure out the context which you con conceptualize as an entity. Or whenever you see something, you're like, okay, how am I supposed to be looking at this? Right? <clears throat> There's moments when I talk to people and, you know, I, I, I ask them questions trying to see how they look. After some point, I'm like, I can't. Like... There's, it's like I can't see how they are seeing their own sight, you know? You know, recently I've been thinking, you know, what's, what's, what's like the best approach to life? <clears throat> like what, what is the best thing we can make of the moment, okay? I've honestly been thinking about this and you know there's some questions that are so deep that the way I approach them is is that I consider them but I don't take them seriously see the idea of life the reason the purpose of consciousness is access if you look at evolution what what the <clears throat> survival and adaption has pointed to is that this creature wants to continue its access in this video game of life because honestly life is like a video game we log into it into the mo in the morning right we activate right we customize ourselves and then we step out the door to serve a changing world somehow. You know, something that still is a mystery for me 
I should say mystery. Like I, sometimes I felt I've I found inner answers to it. But what it is is like this idea that like what is the meaning of meaning? And after some point, when a person subjectively attempts to articulate life, you realize that you're, you know, if you if you choose your character to be weak, then you access like a weak level of the game. If you choose your character to be strong, then you, you, life shows you your own strength, you know? It's like imagine a weak soul and this weak soul was going through weak incarnations and at some point the weak soul was like, yo, truth, wh whoever's running this, you know, incarnation game, you know? It's like show me the more c uh, complex and advanced levels. And this is where true strength is karmically shown based on the challenges. Right? Some people can be strong when it comes to, let's say, spatial intelligence or internal movement. Right, Inner, When it comes to, let's say, awareness of the observer. And some people are exceptional when it comes to awareness of the observed. You know? I'm someone who... How can I say it? It's like after I, I found different ways to move my body... Then I was like, okay, what else can I move? And I realized I can move my mind. But the way the mind moves is that the mind is like this, let's use the term technology. Imagine your brain is this technology and the brain's like, what should I do with all the sensory information I'm receiving? And so the brain, what it does, it molds it, it sculpts it. And we have to realize our organs are in, the, in a sort of creative and maintaining process. Do you know? You know, for me, I have this view that different body parts, like different, this, this might sound bizarre, but different deities like Brahma and Vishnu, Shiva are paying attention to it. So it's kind of like, imagine the, 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 let's say from a metaphysic, metaphysical context, like the, fo the force behind one's heartbeat is if Vishnu is still paying attention to them, imagine. Or the, or the person's breathing or anything. Just the whole processes of the body are how, like, the world's like, okay, being, you shall remain. But the whole point of it is, what I'm trying to say is, like, what is the ultimate attitude to a changing world? And so, should we take it serious? Should we take it easy? You know, should we look at things simply? Should, should we embrace infinite complexity? Like, what, what sort of type of attitude is the right way? And you know what I'm realizing? I, I realized something from looking at, at, if you look at, like, the image of, like, the earliest cells. Like, how a human being, like, how a cell kind of creates itself. Right? And then you see the cell copies itself. Right? Like, isn't that interesting? The self copies itself. And what do they say in psychology? They say when a person sees something good or bad in someone else, they're actually seeing a reflection of their own memories and self in the other. Right? So what I'm saying is, when human beings attempt to communicate with one another, they're attempting to share each other's inner realities. And they, the reason they're sharing inner realities is because they are replicating their inner realms like a cell. Right. So 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 imagine I'm a human being who was like, OK, how can I replicate myself? And I was like, yo, Internet, you know, like like. <laughs> Like a stumbling person, you know, like his, his, his hands ahead of his feet just running towards, you know, the table. It's like, yo, the internet, I could self-replicate myself, right? I could have different senses of myself. I mean, technically, I'm creating like immortal versions of myself in cyberspace, you know? <clears throat> For example, they looked at the peacock, you know? And they were like, what's the peacock's mating strategy? The peacock opened its wings. Do you know, what's the mating strategy of this other bird? Do you know, it's like the bird danced. You know, it's like, what's the mating strategy of this fish under the sea? It made sand dunes and shit, right? It's like, what's Mr. Within's mating strategy? <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
ah, you know, <laughs> you know, this is a podcaster's mating strategy. Just give as many podcasts. <laughs> Somebody in the chat section has written a question which I can barely understand. (laughs) But, but, I wanted to say as a response, when somebody says I can't even write or focus on my work. Here, let me tell you this. When you look at life and you ask yourself, what do I have control over? This is an important question. What do I have control over? We have control over our body, you know. This is why many have dancing careers. But we also have control, okay, over let's say what we communicate or express but what we really have control is choice see what what the human deal is is in some sense that life is an opportunity that you are something and as you make decisions you experience what you're becoming and at some point you know the curtains are pulled and the theater theatrical show changes so the what i'm telling people is your choice Right. Like if you want to walk in a world where, you know, you know, hell is uh, leaking into earth, for example. Sure. You could live in that world or you could live in a world where, you know, it's like you're living in a world where every being, every every conscious entity is being attracted to this idea of building paradise on earth. Okay, which means let's see how great God's creation really is. Which is another way of saying, let's see how great we can be as beings, as human beings. You see? Because when I have asked myself, what is cruelty? And I'm like, what the... Like when I... (laughs) I don't know how to say this, but cruelty uh, is ignorance that went on too long. Because a person's character mutates in accordance to their actions. So if you're someone who, here, let me tell you something that, um, I think the guy's name was Aaron Daughtry, like he's this YouTuber and, uh, somebody in the discord just shared one of his videos and I got a huge realization from one of his videos where he was saying that in this life, if you want, let's say you want, you have some vision, ambition or something, you got to make sure three dimensions are aligned. And these dimensions are like your actions, your feelings, and your thoughts, your thinking, okay? Now, what this means is that uh, these are like three views where the person has to see something real about their ambition and then it becomes kind of, their motivation becomes, like their single-pointed concentration on their vision becomes kind of like complete. I don't know how to say it. It's decisions, you know, like, let me tell you something bizarre. I decided in 2014 to give 10,000 talks and everything else happened automatically after that. It was as if the decision set the possibility of the karma, right? And you know, my vision is not to have viewers like endlessly listen to to my talks, right? But my vision is for these Mr. Within talks to kind of like make the viewers realize that the future is valuable, right? Like you could be someone from the new age community and you've heard, let's say, like these new age gurus say, come to the here and now. And then like pretty much their teachings like <laughs> in the new age community the yogis are like very like in a very sacred way they're like everybody shut the fuck up <laughs> shut the fuck up and come to the here and now we don't give a shit about your individual biases on what reality has to be come to the here and now <clears throat> and you know what why 
to me, there's something funny about that. Because when you come to the here and now, what do you find? You find everything being present at once. And so let me tell every person who's gone towards spirituality, you know, something about uh, the divine play or the cosmic joke. Okay? You're going to realize we, the consciousness will incarnate as long as it is waiting for something outside of itself to be it. This might sound bizarre, but the more depressed the species becomes, the more prone to possession it becomes. It's the law of nature. Okay, when you're weak, like, like the predators growl and shit, you know, <laughs> you know. Imagine the person feels weak and they suddenly hear growls and then they see like the YouTube recommendations automatically went to like wolf growls video, like a two hour wolf growls video. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this world is an opportunity for us to see what we are made of and what we make of ourselves suggests what kind of world we're in, right? For me, I ask myself, okay, what's the best problem to solve? Or let me just tell you how, how my thinking's inspired right now. Um, when I was in grade six, I had this math teacher, and that, this math teacher told the class this story that, you know, he was so busy tr playing soccer, and this was like in university, and he was, he was applying for like the most complex and, you know, uh, infamous uh, physics program of the country right, like in Iran right and so his the day of his exam comes and this guy hasn't studied and he was out playing soccer so he has to cram like in one night he has to prepare for the most he has to prepare for the most complex course uh, excuse me for the most complex exam okay so he's he's telling the classroom this math teacher of ours in when i was in grade six is telling the story and so he says he had to make a decision there and he decides to spend the whole night instead of memory like cramming for everything and studying everything to study the hardest problems on the exam so he takes the most hardest problem and the whole night he spends understanding it, trying to solve it, relying on his own intelligence to solve it. And so he manages to solve it and he doesn't sleep and he goes to the exam. And in the exam, he's like, oh man, I didn't see the other questions. But because he attempted and he understood the most complex question, all the other questions on the exam were easy and he got one of the highest scores. And he was telling the students in the class, like in your, in life, you're going to see like problem sets. Okay. And you got to, in some sense, select the hardest problem because that hardest problem is occupying the most space in your mind. Do you know? And even though I'm saying this, you know, some things are easier said than done, of course. It's the nature of your attention. What I've noticed is you can make so much of yourself behind your eyes instantly in the inner realms and in the outer realms. It takes time, strategy, and tactics and whatnot. <clears throat> so what do I mean by this? That means in my inner realms, am I inside a Ferrari right now? You know, but in my outer realms, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> You know, it's like, have you ever sat in a car and felt like you're riding a horse? You know? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. What it is, is I ask myself, okay, consciousness is here to deal with worldhood. Part of worldhood is selfhood. 
part of selfhood, unconscious selfhood is consciously remembering worldhood. And you know what it is? It's kind of like, <clears throat> it's like there's another dimension overlaying earth that is not bound by the conditions of this dimension. And you know, some people say the third eye opens, you know, and for me, it's, it's as if like there's these two eyes and everything that these two eyes has comes to my mind's eye, my sight. That means when I close my eyes and see something like that sight, right? So people say imagination is not real, but the person closes their eyes and they're like, if it's not real, what am I looking at? <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, what can I say? Hold on, guys. I'm looking for something. I think it's worth the wait. Okay, so I found something I want to read it for the viewers. So it says the idea of, in quotations, the moment can refer to a specific point in time that is considered significant or important. It can also refer to the present moment or the experience of being fully present in the here and now. The concept of the moment is often associated with the idea of living in the present and being fully engaged in the present moment, rather than being distracted or preoccupied with the past or the future. Some people believe that by focusing on the present moment, they can be more mindful, aware, and present in their lives, and that this can lead to greater happiness and fulfillment. I mean, this is true. But for me, you know what it is? I mean, people have different approaches. Not Everybody's not designed to be the same. All I'm saying is just wonder about like your own style of intelligence, and you'll be fascinated on who you can be, <coughs> or who you have always been. Sometimes in life, new dimensions are added, and sometimes in life, dimensions are taken away. And just like the poet Rumi says, there's a secret freedom, uh, you know, uh, peering through from a crack, you can barely see something in these lines. So what it is, is our relationship with how we link the subjectivity of our inner realms with the objectivity of our outer realms. You know, this is why I think compliments in psychology are huge. But of course, nowadays, like there's also the liberal culture, you give a compliment, they're like, what did you mean by that? that <laughs> it's like, how dare you give me a compliment? Yeah. <laughs> These are things in the future I'll talk more about. But I have this vision <clears throat> that I'm, I'm going to start like this giant, there will be this giant research uh, project where every person who is a fan of 
these Mr. Within talks can contribute. You know, the idea is what is the best strategy for 8 billion creatures walking on a sphere in the middle of nowhere where the meaning of it all is how words have become our world. You know, it's fascinating. Everything is man-made. You know, even my opinion on myself is man-made. <laughs> you know, they ask the person, it's, are you, it's like, are you really an inventor? And the person's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm inventing this moment right now. This is a good moment uh, for the viewers to ask questions uh, until I figure out what I'm going to say. <laughs> <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know. Like, what can I say? We're all different beings, different DNA. I think the purpose of life, there's 100% like a physical component to it, right? <clears throat> I am I am that person who's saying like, um, my view is different, you know, I, I, I'm like that person who like, the like if, if, if the ancient yogis could see me, okay? <laughs> Guys, I, this is my opinion, okay? This is the impression I have, the feeling I have, okay? It's completely subjective from my point of view what I'm thinking like if if like if like if let's say a group of yogis like in the Himalayas or something they they'd hear my talks they'd be like yo no way is this guy like was this guy in the Himalayas before like yo <laughs> like they'd imagine imagine right and but then they'd be like yo wait a minute though what did he say? And because at the end of everything, I'm telling people we got to build an advanced civilization, right? So I'm, I'm pretty much trying to, I think personally, what's going on just with, the, with, the, with my life force in this is that <clears throat> I am trying to attract uh, the most advanced beings, not just on earth, but from all, from all fathomable dimensions. And the whole point is, is like gathering this great force and kind of like, like Dragon Ball Z, like Goku. <laughs> Instead of Kamehameha, Civilization 2.0. <laughs> Jokes aside though, what, I, what it is, is for me, it's retaliation against the unknown, right? There's a scene let me tell you, like, the fe the feeling I have and the role, like, the advanced communicators and the advanced humanity is going to play, okay? <clears throat> there was a scene in Lord of the Rings, I, I think it was the third movie. There was an actor who, unfortunately, I don't know his name, but... The character he was playing in Lord of the Rings uh, 3 is this character called Theoden King. Okay, King Theoden. <clears throat> and so there's a scene where King Theoden, his army comes to save Gondor, this kingdom against this mountain. And they defeat the first army, but then they look to the background and they're like, yo, what is that? Is that a giant animal I see? You know, and so there's that moment where this guy is a king. So imagine a king and an army is following him in, in battle. So the idea of a king is that he's fearless. You know, a king that has fear is not a king, is an imposter. You know, this is very important, right? Because those positions are important, right? Man, where was I going with this? I just distracted myself. <laughs> Sorry guys, I completely... <clears throat> you know, it's like I was holding on to the arrow of what I was gonna say, but I dropped the bow. <laughs> Oh.
ultimately what I'm trying to say, I guess, <clears throat> is that the most advanced state of the human being is a state that has attained such a freedom that it doesn't need to seek freedom. It has attained such clarity that it doesn't need to seek clarity. It has, it has attained such abundance that it doesn't need to seek it. And you know what it is? <clears throat> Some people say technology is going to be the end of like natural biological human history. But the end of history is only when we stop being human. You know? I don't know. I just feel every person is waiting for something way bigger than what the world is right now. I honestly feel human beings, the information age, has made us way more capable minds than the lives our bodies are living. And you know, let me tell you what's going to happen. There will come a time where immortality will become possible. Okay? And when immortality becomes possible, those people are going to experience a, a life where it's going to sort of transcend morality. Usually immortal beings, for them nothing matters anymore. Like right or wrong becomes meaningless. You know, all, usually for the human being, its value system is based on what it has and what it loses, right? So we're pretty much born with this existential being, and as we get old and then we die, like we, it's like pretty much there's absence of what was there. In the chat section, somebody says, tell us more about your childhood, please. <coughs> And he's, I mean, you could ask something specific and I'll see if there's a story there. So you can ask a specific question. What do you want to know about my childhood, you know? Do you want to know if in my childhood I would, like, you know, levitate automatically, you know? I was blessed to have a childhood that was very outdoors. That's all I can say. Me and my twin brother would climb trees, collect rocks, run after dogs, then run from them, you know. There's something about life where I think there's an experiential quota that consciousness has to attain, and when it attains, it's done. Okay? This might sound bizarre, but just like a bee goes on a flower and, you know, extracts the nectar, similarly, right, it's as if we've caught some, some unknown attention has manifested as an individual to get a sense of what, a, what being a character in a world is like. Now, what we're more realizing more and more and what the species and human history is waking up from Somebody in the chat section says for civilization too, if it is genetic, neurological, or biological, then it should not be criminal. I don't know what's that referring to. Somebody wants to know about my twin brother. I could tell you that. Uh, My father and my twin brother are like 
I perceive them as enlightened beings, actually. I mean, to some degree, I, I perceive an enlightened nature in everybody. It's just something you can tune into. But um, I don't know. People are different. That's as far as that response to that question goes. You know, life is fascinating because there's static moments and there's dynamic moments. And the human being is not just conscious of a world. The, uh, a, a human being is com conscious of, it's not like a photograph, but rather a film <clears throat> where inside what the world is, there is dimensions. Do you know how mind-blowing the concept of atoms are? I think people were not fascinated enough by the concept of atoms. That inside what we see that has a shape, there is a hidden geometrical structure. And then inside that geometrical structure, there's a hidden geometrical structure. What it means is we're living in a reality where there's worlds hidden in worlds. <clears throat> and because there's worlds hidden in worlds, we are one of the worlds that has become unhidden to itself. So most likely, we're going to realize not only is there aliens and interdimensionally superior beings, but there's also inside every atom, like universes of their own dance, you know? Because what transcendence is, is how first the self doesn't trust itself, then it learns to trust itself, then it doesn't trust the world, then it learns to trust the world, and when the self trusts itself, the world and it, and the world and it the self trusts the world, there's an opportunity for the world self, your world self to live on this planet. Okay? And your world self is non-dual and most likely you have a heightened attention like an eagle. You know? <clears throat> so what do I mean by that is that um you see, it, people's intelligence is based on what they are interpreting. Really, what the brain is, is an in, instrument for interpretation. Okay? It's, it's a translating device. And it's translating sensory perception into the meaning of our lives. Okay, guys, just like uh, somebody in an airplane that just, like, jumps out of the airplane and, like, you know, releases the parachute, you know, I'm going to jump out of the chat section. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, let's, uh, it's, it's been an hour. I mean, I should probably end this off, you know. What you make of the moment, what are you making of your moment, and what do you think 8 billion, uh, you know, similar types of consciousnesses yourself should make of the world? And I feel that, you know, if we don't know what to do, what's the, you know, it's hilarious. It's kind of like you have a problem to solve, and so you're like, okay, I can't solve this problem. So what do you do? You try to, you create another problem where you're like, how can I... Uh, how can I solve the problem of coming up with a solution that is possible to be a, a, a solution to the other problem? So what I'm trying to say is that mankind, it's just like mining. Like imagine you're a miner, you know. And so you're mining in this mountain and bit by bit, you know, but the effort is endless. You know, so many people say they love their, you know, they love people, they love animals, they love themselves. So many people say this. 
But in reality, I this is my opinion. If you really love the world, you would love all the dimensions of the world. And all the dimensions of the world means that you're not alone. See, this is something I... You know, I mean, on, on some point, sure, like freedom is important. We have freedom to like, you know, do a backflip and we have a freedom to like, you know, you know, <clears throat> you know, trip or run in the highway. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there's there's freedom to do bizarre things and there's there's freedom to do the chaotic activities and freedom to do ordered activities. But the question comes, what version of you? Imagine there's many versions of you, many thoughts come and go. But what version of you deserves to be deserves to be expressed right for me this is i don't know maybe i think people are raised in different cultures right but for me the the type of cultural attitude i guess i i, I don't know mine is kind of like meshed between canada and iran but like <clears throat> for me we should have enough politeness to still be capable to take reality seriously, but enough humor to stretch it out and to see what the other possibilities are. You know, it's as if which kind of artist do you respect? Do you respect an artist that just gets the brush and just doesn't even look at the canvas and just slashes on the canvas and says, I'm making art, guys, like for your, like a toddler's art, you know? Or do you care for like that Japanese artist who takes the calligraphy brush and in some sense with such accuracy and care like moves the brush with such conscious attention and understand contextual understanding and then the intent of expression. So really this is what I'm trying to tell the viewers like I'm talking about advanced communicators and people in the chat section are like you know like you know there's nothing wrong but in some sense it's like what are you choosing to express or who are you choosing to to let other others see do you know it's as if what do you really deserve do you know and there came a time let me tell you this i saw this shark tank episode that changed my life <laughs> do you know So in this Shark Tank episode, what happened was that um, pretty much I just saw a clip and this scene, okay, <clears throat> where there's this guy called Damon, uh, Damon, I think, and he was just saying at some point his life changed when he decided to have high value thoughts instead of low value thoughts people don't understand how important this is you know the younger you are you understand this the better your life will be i think this is my my view like it makes sense you know so what it is is do you have a low value thought of yourself of the world of others or are you living in a high value or do you have high value thoughts like is it is it like when you talk to people do you see them as advanced beings do you see yourself as an advanced being do you see the world as an advanced being and even if you don't see it externally the potential is there that's why you see it in the inner realms. What I'm telling the viewers is that there's this attributeless observer that chooses its attributes, okay? And to me, the, the people might, this might sound intense, people might be like, Mr. Within, you know, don't say this, but I'll say it. I think all mental, except mental illness that is biologically induced, like there's damage to the brain or something, I'm not talking about that. But if, but any other type of mental illness is laziness to change real context. And people are going to be like, this is like rude or something. I mean, this is, some things have to be said before they're forgotten, you know? To me, it's your decision. 
you know it's like you know it's like the person can very completely like they're normal when 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 they like let's say get a cup of water and fill the water up but then suddenly like when somebody talks to them their behavior is, is abnormal right <clears throat> so that makes no sense because in one reality it's normal in another reality it isn't right so it's the nature of the context one thinks they're in you see in in ancient uh, yogic practices they would say the mind is a trickster <clears throat> and people were like what my mind's a magician <laughs> and people would be like no the mind's not a magician the brain is tricking itself into accepting what it sees as truth all the time it's doing this why because our the nature of our body isn't based on the speed so when we slow down the bot the brain is like yo i'm just everything i don't need to do anything but when we move or when we're running the brain's like i'm being everything right now i'm becoming everything do you see it's momentum it's the speed and what suggests the speed of your mind check this out it's your vision and what your vision means is the context of the type of story you're telling yourself. So what it means to have low value thoughts and high value thoughts, it's not like the person's like, yo, if I behave this way, I'm going to have high value thoughts. No, 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 no. <clears throat> it's about what kind of world are you in? <clears throat> and at what point in this world did decency stop mattering to you? And if you can go back in time somehow and find that moment, you'll realize what freedom means doesn't mean freedom to just dance around in the space-time continuum. Freedom means freedom to see any kind of world. The reform and the behavior of the outer realms is different. We got to realize we're 8 billion. We're like these creatures, these beings that are using these this abstract, subjective, inner qualia dimension, right? This inner realm dimension to move the objective dimension. We, our imagination is what is constantly updating reality. And yet we're like, imagination doesn't exist. But here's the hilarious thing. Just like a caterpillar inside a cocoon, a butterfly doesn't exist. But when we act upon the imagination, yo, something abstract became real? No way. <laughs> you see, guys, I don't know, but I, I, my, my, I, you know, when I was very young, my mother said something to me and my brother. And she said something that was something that um, a scholar had said. I think it was Ibn Sina. I don't know who had said it. But some important, wise sage and scholar and, you know, astronomer or something. Some important figure, impo important, let's say, divinely attributed figure, okay? This guy was so polite. So my mother comes to me and my twin brother and says this story, shares this story, and tells us that there was this guy, I, let's call him Ibn Sina or whoever. There was this sage. And some people come up to this sage and say, say, dear sage, how are you so polite? Like, how? How are you even polite to your enemies, to, you know, to your friends, to the king, the peasant? How are you so polite? Like, how, how are you, right? Like this polite. And the person says, I learned from the rude. Everything they were doing, I did the opposite. So you see, this is why I'm saying it's laziness. You see, to me, like, I'm like, man, li just like this Mr. Within podcast is being live streamed, our consciousness is being live streamed in a world, in the space-time continuum. And so with what sort of honor and context are you holding the moment? Do you care about greatness or is chaos enough for you? Because let me tell you, chaos is easy. Just like they say, it's easier to break a house of cards. It takes w way longer to build it. It's the same with building and architecture.
If somebody says, Mr. Within, how do you advance civilization? Or what can I do to advance civilization? I would say first begin asking the question, what does your species deserve? And then that question will lead you to this vision where you'll be like, okay, I'm not just looking at it from my own perspective. I'm considering as many angles as possible before I attempt to solve the problem. This is why they say patience is a virtue. So some people, whatever thought comes in their mind, like I've noticed this in the chat section, because you don't enjoy your communication if you don't see its geometry. When I give these Mr. Within talks, I see the beauty of the inner realms and like the geometry of how the inner realms is moving and then I speak, right? But sometimes in the chat section, and a lot of people in the New Age community, they have this one-sided divine expression, right? Where it's as if they're not they're not looking at the information that they're just giving like one. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Right? So this is the issue. And I've noticed this in the chat section. And it's not just people now. It's just like a different people. <clears throat> and I think it's the nature of the poetic thing. I think what it is is it, it's like... People are realizing something from these Mr. Within talks that's allowing them to be free. And of course, the chat section's there and the keyboard's there. So I totally understand. Like, sure, express your freedom. But what I'm saying is like, you know, I could choose to have muddy boots and go inside like, you know, a king's palace and in front of the king's living room and just with muddy boots be like, yo, I'm going to express my freedom right now. <laughs> I'm start dancing like on the king's most like expensive rug with like muddy boots or something you know what i'm saying like sure you can have freedom but you must understand do you want to have a solipsist freedom do you want to be alone in your freedom or do you want to access the world where all of our eyes have come to build something for me i'm kind of like yo something's like like there's no reason why there should be this many creatures suddenly on a planet like if you look at the planet human beings just massively expanded right it was as if the universe was like ah oh, i'm bored all right human beings like human beings like you know and just the fact that we managed to you know reproduce and continue you know <laughs> sorry guys i'm laughing because i'm I'm seeing this humorous, you know, hypothetical theo theological angle to this where God's like looking at one of his angels and he's like, sorry, angel, but, you know, you got to go help these creatures, you know, reproduce, you know, you got to go help them know where to put it. <laughs> and so divine force, interdimensional, invisible force guided reproduction of the human species, you know. We don't believe in aliens, but, you know, there's definitely something else moving everything. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, you know, when I give profound, like, deep philosophical talks and then, you know, silliness kind of like, it's a wildfire. But anyways... See, the best thing I could, the best thing they say, it's like, you know, I think it was Galileo. He says, you cannot uh, teach anyone anything. You can just make them realize it within themselves. <clears throat> and what does that mean? That means the task of the teacher is to expand the context and the children make up their own concepts. And honestly, what our choice does is that it allows you to enjoy what you choose. You see, someone, someone, let's say somebody is not hungry and you put the most incredible meal in front of them. And you're like, yo, man, this is the most incredible meal. And the person's like, I'm not hungry, man. I just ate, right? 
And so, is that person lucky or unlucky? I don't know, a part of me feels like my consciousness is here on this earth to see collective human behavior because we have we are, we have we are living as civilized intelligent minds life is no longer there is no longer physical objective revolutions necessary it's more like the greatness of the ideas con uh, gladiating it out okay <clears throat> to me it, it's like really what is intelligence intelligence is um, let's say what uh, what processes vision and I don't know I mean I gotta I gotta share this with the viewers you know there was a time in my life where I wanted to be a mechanical engineer and since childhood I've been fascinated by design and geometry so when I give these talks my <clears throat> my, my approach to their structure is usually with design and creating designs okay it's like people don't realize that this is coming from someone who was shy when he was younger. That speech is an ability to draw on the canvas of silence. So this world, you can just, you know, your mind can generate reality internally. And has been doing so. You know, they say it takes 10,000 hours, you know. They say it takes 10,000 hours to attain mastery. So if I say 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours, so what it means is that literally uh, 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 10,000 hours is literally one year, one year and a month. And a month, yeah, one year and a month. So that means in less than a year and a half, we attain mastery if we just concentrate on doing something to attain a new skill. <clears throat> now, what I'm saying is, if a person was, let's say you entertain a metaphysical perspective and you're like, wait a minute, I've had 10,000 hours of living as a human being. I've had 10,000 hours of being a conscious and mobile entity in the realm, a biological and cognitive system synchronized enough to be a per persona in, the, in, in a sort of unknown world, right? So, so what it is, is we are actually masters in how we have survived this far. And what our survival is dependent on, it used to be just strength and just power, but now it has come to vision. Do you know, because let me tell you something, I learned this from mafia movies, like the movies Godfather and all of this, right? You realize that, you know, all those people who were in the gym and in some sense, like building up physical strength, they were hired by those had the, who had the mental strength. So those who have, so the more mental strength you have, the less you are on the battlefield. Think of it like a general. Like the emperor is like just not even on the battlefield. The generals like from above the battlefield watching the battle and the commanding officers are behind the soldiers and the soldiers are up front, let's say. And you know, people say love yourself. But when you come to love yourself, yourself is codependent with everything else that's giving meaning to the moment. <clears throat> so loving yourself means loving your whole moment of being. And when you love your whole moment of being, what is love? Love is authorization of being. You know, something that shouldn't be forgotten, right? As a person born in 90, 1991, I could say this. With the authority of a symmetrical year. You know, there's a generation... <clears throat> 
the, see the, the kindness of the past is what deserves to sculpt the future, the present. And then the present's kindness suggests what kind of future we're going through. I'll share this with the viewers. Think of it this way. Think of it that regardless of if you were born as, if you are born as, let's say, we are all human beings right now on Earth. But I'm saying, let's say whatever. If you were teleported into whatever world, right? And you opened your eyes, you realize all conscious entityhood has to deal with how am I conscious and then it realizes the unconscious. When you realize the unconscious, it doesn't mean you become, you become like, you, you, you become possessed by all your infinite potential. You see, you see there's an honor, there's an elegant, there's, I, at least in my vision, when it comes to esotericism, when it comes to the inner realms, when it comes to the concept of divinity, do you know what that means? That's kind of like you've taken your ego off like shoes before you enter a temple, right? <clears throat> so I don't know, you know, it, it's like it's the question of value. I'm going to read for viewers something. It's about high value and low value thoughts. If I can find it though. <clears throat> so here, check this out. High value thoughts can play a significant role in achieving financial success and wealth. These are thoughts that focus on abundance, growth, and prosperity, rather than scarcity and lack. What an individual consistently thinks, uh, excuse me, when an individual consistently thinks high value thoughts, they can create a mindset that is conducive to financial success. High value thoughts can help an individual identify and pursue opportunities for growth and wealth and creation. Identify opportunities. See, that's that's the value. Like that's the true intention. Like the true, uh, like that's what the educational system should be aiming for, raising that ability. But anyways, <clears throat> so it says high value thoughts can help an individual identify and pursue opportunities for growth and wealth creation. They can also help an individual develop the mindset and skills necessary for financial success, such as discipline, what else? determination, and resilience. <clears throat> determination is, is how much do you trust your vision? And then it says, additionally, high-value thoughts can help an individual overcome limiting beliefs <clears throat> and negative self-talk that may hold them back from achieving their financial goals. By consistently cultivating high-value thoughts, an individual can create a mindset that is aligned with their financial goals and increase their chances of achieving financial success and wealth. You know what this means? That means ask yourself what you deserve then actually experience your original karma. After some point, you know, when life is too much like a roller coaster, the attention has to be like, okay, <laughs> okay, cosmos, okay, you know, let's say, <clears throat> uh, you know, hyper demigods of, or hyper lords of karma or whatever. Okay, spirit of a changing world. If I am here, if I have arrived, if my attention can serve this world, then open doors as if they were open from the beginning. You see, it's our journey on this planet and we have to journey in the way where we're like, yo, the planet's letting us be here. We gotta help it. You know, like we, we gotta have that kind of attitude. You know, a part of me thinks, 
like I feel like if I wasn't doing these Mr. Within talks, or maybe in the future I might do this, I would go like like in Japan and start like an anime company and start making you know anime about the advanced civilization. It's like our children still watching SpongeBob. You know? <laughs> So anyways guys, what else can I say? I mean I'm I've read I've 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 said poetry, I've read prose, I've I've talked about it. It's like what else do the viewers want? It's like should I sing? Do you want me to sing? <laughs> no, I can't There's a song called All Eyes on Me. By Bo Burnham, Bo Burnham, Burnham, Bo Burnham, and on YouTube, and I think he was inspired by Tupac, who has a song called All Eyes on Me, I think. And in this song, there's a moment where, like, he has this lyric where he says, let me see if I can find this. Attempts to give you what he can't give himself. You see, it's the nature of the human being. We all go into these positions. Where at some point, we want to give more than we take. Why? Because we notice it's a temporary journey. And then we ask ourselves, what's the greatest thing we can give? Which, which parallels to the title of this episode, what you make of the moment. <clears throat> what we can give this world is first, this is my vision. Like if, if I was in charge of, let's say, you know, the advancement of civilization, I would be like every person has to write a book and every person, instead of expressing in the outer realms, you know, like a, they say mad scientists, like mad artists, like instead of having that sort of expression, express it, express it on the page. Do you know? Great writers are actually technically great internal alchemists, right? They can convert the energy of the moment, right? It's all, that's why I'm saying mental illness is a sign of laziness because the question comes, who is responsible to move the moment at all? It's like, why are we alive if, if we are waiting for some, but something outside of us? Like, what's the point of the inner dimension then, you know? <clears throat> when I was younger, I thought like, man, should I read a book? to get confidence then I was like what the f <laughs> at some point I was like yo this inner realm has never been here before you know what's fascinating what's worth you know daily praise and celebration how every moment is a moment where we are being a being that has never existed before but the torch has been passed down you see, it's like, what did your ancestors live for, you know? And for me, our ancestors lived for our minds. They lived for our ability to figure out the things they couldn't. And to be honest, emotions... Let me tell you something. <laughs> Just like that guy in that like meme video that he's about to like bungee jump like on a chair. He's like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <clears throat> the more emotional a species is, becomes, the less it chooses to attempt, the more it gets convinced by the comfort zone. Think of like in the Abrahamic traditions, like I don't know. There's this view where they say there's an angel and a, a sort of devil on the shoulder of the person, each person.
So there is in some sense a choice between how advanced the moment should be. Because what is the greatest gift? I don't know if anybody who's been following this channel has ever thought that thought about this, but what is the greatest gift? And some people would say truth, but I would say the ultimate advancement of understanding. You see, consciousness knows it is not the body and it knows it's not the ego. But it has to make the ego the imposter so we don't realize the invisible is moving the visible. Right? That means it's like an ingenious tactic where <clears throat> this is my theory, right? Where I think actually we're all being like human consciousness is like a surveillance of higher dimensions. I feel we are like antennas. I notice this in speech, right? I notice that like there's rhythms that comes and goes. You know what's fascinating? The world's not just turning, the world is turning in our eyes. And so, you know, this is something, a question maybe you've never been asked, whoever you are listening, but how are your eyes holding the world, which is becoming your sight? In what type of sight are you moving in? In, in? in the Zen tradition, you know, there's a saying, Zen proverb, where they say, if you want to climb a mountain, start at the top. And what my intent is with this YouTube channel, and this is something that actually broke my heart, like at the beginning, like, you know, but now I've become kind of numbed and like, you know, I accept it, right? <clears throat> but I started like this Discord server and I was expecting like, he, like people to come there, you know, displaying their most advanced selves, you know? I was expecting like advanced, you know, communicators, their most advanced version. But what I found was in some sense like barbaric expressionism. <laughs> Do you know? And I ask myself, what is it in this life that changes our lives? And it is our vision, and our vision is the value we see in the moment. Do you see that means? <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Uh... It's like some people go to, go to, let's say, school, go to university, they go to college, and they go there thinking they're a student, which is why they fail. But some people go to university already being the concluding architect, the conclusion of the architect. Do you see? It's all about the type of reality you're looking at life, right? At some point, you know, I chose that like a mental activity was more valuable than a physical activity, you know. I ended up here. But I don't know why I keep getting this vision. Like I've had it so many times where I think like it's like definitely like it better happen. <laughs> You know, I want to build <clears throat> the most, like, incredible headquarters for all those people on the planet who want to advance civilization. And it's going to be like a research institute. Imagine, like, a research institute researching all the ways we can advance civilization. And everybody is serving, you know, not just as a physical being, not just serving the body of civilization, but when I'm saying everybody should write a book because your eyes are as valuable as to, is, are as valuable to others as much as they can see them, right? It's kind of like the shy kid 
being like, why is the world so cruel to me? Why doesn't anybody understand me? But the shy kid hasn't communicated anything for anybody to understand. Do you know what I'm saying? It's that kind of... <laughs> I don't know. I, I have this view where I, I realize, oh my God, imagine everybody in, on the planet, like when we were in a world of clones, like a utopic world of clones where everybody was cool. Right? Imagine we were in, like, this parallel universe of Earth where everybody was cool in the same way, like, the sleep were, like, pretty much the same. So I'm like, oh, my God. You know, when I was younger, I was trying to fit in. I was like, what am I trying to fit into? I'm a completely different being than any being that has existed here. You know, it's like, so the eyes of the human being is value. In an advanced civilization, the civilization would be like, whoa, instead of me treating like 8 billion creatures on a rock as sheep, and I built the fences with like, you know, money, entertainment and whatnot, and you know, the theories go on. But what I'm trying to say is there's something more. And we as a species better not miss it. An advanced humanity, that is, that is to me like the legend of the future. Like we don't have legends, we don't have mythology, you know? People are like secularism changed the world. It made it into, you know, like a very accurate place. But then we realized what we sacrificed was our relationship with the deeper potentials of our mind. Like, sure, you look at our ancestors and you're like, yo, these guys were, you know, worshipping abstraction. But then you realize they weren't, though. In the outer realms, to us, as people from the future, sure, they were, like, oblivious. But to themselves, that reality was there. A warrior on a battlefield would look at the sky and would be like, Apollo, guide me and run into battle. Do you see what I'm saying? People, their minds would influence their life in a way more real way than the, the, the revolution of secular, secularism allows. So what secularism has done is make a species so vulnerable in just looping. And let me tell you what I mean by this. What we require is not a dictatorship on how we should perceive the dimensions of reality. What we should do is behave like the how bees behave in building a beehive. Every bee is going outside of the beehive and they're bringing something new back to the beehive and we need every human lifetime to be some advancement of something you know like let's say right now you're like a janitor in a school and you're like mr within like what advancement i'm stuck here you know and so i'll tell you like okay sure but advancement in the inner realms is free it's like you can have it in any moment. So what that means is the janitor can imagine, like, what if the broom moved on its own? Or what if, like, I could, I could like, with one simple movement, like, create a broom that could just, like, fix the problems I'm having that everybody else who's a janitor is having. So do you see what I'm saying? Like, we, we are, like, if, if somebody says, hey, what in this world can generate new things? And sure, the forces of nature, we will grant them the ability, but also man. We are the only species that woke up from the slumber of how the ecosystem was defining us. Do you understand? We had such an unnatural behavior. Like, sure, I understand, you know, the gratefulness for our evolutionary advancement. But at the same time, I'm like, what is this? Did an object become a subject to itself just to notice that it's going to break as an object? Like, what is this? And I realized, no, we're not conscious to, we are not born to be conscious so we watch things break. Like, do you know what I'm saying? For me, the ending doesn't make sense. You know, can you imagine someone's like, yo, do you believe in beginnings? And they're like, yeah, I believe in beginnings. And they're like, do you believe in endings? And the person's like, no. (laughs) 
So what does that mean? That means every moment is beginning. Some people call it death. Others say, you know, the eyes remember where they were actually. And whatever it is, whatever the circumstance, I think that there's a law of this universe, right? And it's kind of like we're here to learn that it's like, think of it this way. Eight, imagine the planet was made of cheese and eight billion like spherical capsules like asteroids, right? Like, like Dragon Ball Z as- capsules, imagine. They hit the earth and because the earth was made of cheese, they created a tunnel inside the earth. So the person had to step out of the pod and climb out of that tunnel of cheese to get to the top of the surface of this cheese planet. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that climbing out of the tunnel is very similar when it comes to climbing, climbing out of our inner realms. So for example, when I look at the chat section and people are just typing something that only makes sense to themselves or appears to others as glossolalia to me i'm like 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 i get it i i get the emotional expression but uh, are you conscious of your expression because anybody can become chaotic it's so easy to be chaotic chaos is the sign of laziness do you know anybody who's owned a refrigerator they know this laziness turns into chaos (laughs) <laughs> I don't know it, It's as if I ask myself You know If every person had a shadow side And a light side What should I see And I, I realize life has provided An opportunity for all To be performers Like what really I think the religious mentality is Is pretty much actors in a world story, like in a world theater, world play, and in a world film, and they don't know who the director is, but they have free will as an actor to animate their own character. And to be a person is an incredible thing, right? People think it's like, yo, I don't have value. It's like you have 4.5 billion years of evolutionary value aside from that incredible uh, arsenal of tools to, in some sense, build something that has never existed before. Life is kind of like a roller coaster ride. It shows you moments where you see the result of your creativity. You see the result of how you've maintained the moment. And then you see the result of things ending. Do you know? All of these dimensions are really there. It's just the nature of our mind. And I think it's decency, you know? That means it's like when you... Like, for example, if Terrence McKenna was giving a live stream... (laughs) If Terrence McKenna was giving a live stream or, let's say... Who else? Um... If Rishi Vyasa was giving a live stream, it's as if, you know, I wouldn't be like, yo, I'm going to go and, you know, just, you know, destroy my keyboard in the chat section, you know. (laughs) I would probably be there and I'd be like, what is this person who I'm listening to seeing? And what is that sight? Because, you know, something I learned was that um, when a person is raised, especially in a religious context, they have this mentality they have to be good all the time. Because they think they have to be good all the time and everything is God's will, they don't set boundaries, right? But what the reason boundaries, but let me tell you at the same time, it's kind of like, It's like we want to give freedom to chaos, but we also want to see how the order plays out. So it's this bizarre situation where we're like, if we give freedom, we got to give freedom to order and chaos. If we don't give freedom, we don't have to give freedom to chaos and we don't have to give freedom to order. But really, I think what it is, is that um, politeness is appreciated and... Your words show how your mind moves, you know. 
imagine there's a bunch of people in a park and they're playing they're doing parkour imagine someone says yo i'm a great parkourist and then they stumble and then you see them stumble <clears throat> and then the person's like yo but i'm a good parkourist and then they're like sure man but you know it's like watch out for your knees and all this right so what it is is like your communication will reveal to the world what the world will then reveal to you you deserve right so it's like what deserves in the outer realms you know like i could treat the outer realms like a like a what do you call it those like trash wasteland containers in the oceans like i could totally treat this planet like like to treat this this uh, you know treat the outer realms like it's a garbage world and be like yeah sure man i'll start just cursing and you know just letting ugliness be everywhere and let 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 there be disturbance and let there be anarchy and just in my own bubble think i'm free you know it's like no 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 if you want to advance civilization your mind should not be your master your mind should be your servant that means it's not it's not wrong to have freedom and to express but it's as if is is who is speaking you know i i think this is very important because it's so easy not to care and think that's artistic freedom but it's actually dissension into oblivion <laughs> <clears throat> anyways you know at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm going to think right now, what would Buddha do if he had a kind of like, you know, ro if, it, if the chat section of his live stream was a roller coaster theme park? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Buddha would probably be like, desire creates suffering. And desire is like attachment, you know, it's like desire creates attachment, attachment creates suffering. So from if buddha was like right now in the same shoes i am in buddha would be like okay if i'm attached to what i think i deserve to receive from the viewers then i suffer but if i am not attached you know if i don't desire anything right then I don't suffer. But you know, from my perspective, I'm like, I'm trying to draw artwork here. You know, it's like, imagine. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, what can I say? You know, no man, there's no such thing as a king of a jungle, just a loud animal. You know? You know, what's hilarious, they say people need attention, but the attention they need is from their self to their self. Because if you care for yourself, you care for how it presents itself in the moment, right? Because it's so easy not to care. And it's so easy to hate that it's boring. Like it's boring you know not like not to care it's so easy to see something as meaningless but to build something into something meaningful there has to be you know what i'm saying there has to be an effort there so what you make of the moment you know if you feel like you know the moment deserves to You know, Mother Nature will show the rest of this talk, you know. <laughs> what you make of the moment, all that Mr. Within is saying is that, dear viewer and listener, attempt in this life to see what your most advanced version is, is because you got a, you have a lifetime to see what that would be. That this is my kind of training. Every day I wake up, I wonder, okay, what would be a more advanced way for me to look at my own moment of being and I'm, I'm i just record them but if i didn't record them the, the quest would even be there and it would even be faster you know but anyways thanks for listening i hope this episode was helpful um i'm trying to say this at the end of these share subscribe like 
comment and as a comment um, whoever who's listened to this talk uh, may, you know answer the subtitle what are you making of your moment or what are your observations on how we make the moment into anything at all thanks for listening much blessings and namaste rise mankind rise mankind.